Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Before I start this video, I gotta say that I'm not a Mufti or a scholar. The opinions expressed in my videos are my own, arrived through intensive practical research and discussions with real scholars. So like you, I'm just a guy doing my best. So smash the like button of this video to push it out to the rest of YouTube and Google where others may find it helpful. Jazakum Allah khair. Credit cards. You know the one where if you don't pay the full balance off at the end of the month, you get charged interest. You know what's coming. They're haram. Right here, the enable list will say, but if I pay what I spend right away, it's okay to use, right? Or there's nothing wrong with interest-based credit cards as long as I don't pay interest. <laughs> That's an even stupid statement. But hey, here's what the majority would say. Well, the scholars have allowed it. Yeah, personally, I'm not contradicting the Quran and the Sunnah following that scholar because he ain't going to be in our grave answering for us. But forget me for a sec and yourselves. Let's listen to this quick clip from Dr. Zakir Naik. And here, I totally agree with him. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Is using credit card halal? If you're talking about the conventional credit card, where, where the bank gives you permission that you can utilize X amount of money depending upon a credit card, whether that is bronze level, silver level, gold level, depending upon the amount, some give you few thousand dollars, some give ten thousand dollars, some give forty thousand dollars, depending upon the level. And this money that you utilize, you have to give within one or two months. And if you give that, then there is no interest. If you give above that, then there is an exorbitant interest which goes to up to maybe 3% a month, that is 36%. Anywhere from 2 to 3% a month, that is 24 to 36% a year, which is exorbitant. And I know there are some scholars who say that if you are using a credit card, as long as you see to it, you pay within the stipulated time, within the one month or two month frame, and no interest that's permitted, I disagree with it. It is totally haram. The moment you take a credit card from a conventional bank, you are signing a document saying that if you do not pay it in time, you will give riba. Signing a document that you will pay riba is also haram. Majority of the Muslims living in Western countries, in America, in European countries, in UK, have a credit card from a conventional bank. Majority, unfortunately. I know there are scholars of the Western countries that need permission. It is 100% totally haram. All the major scholars, whether it be Jakut Aymin, whether it be Sheikh bin Baz, majority have said even having a credit card of conventional bank is haram because you are signing. And who can give guarantee that you will always pay on time? You are a human being. You can make a mistake. If once also you forget to pay on time, it is haram. Allah and the full wage of war against you. Even if you pay on time regularly, only signing a document is haram. So using a credit card of a conventional bank is totally haram. I am aware there are some scholars that have given permission. I disagree with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, number 278 and 279 O believers, fear Allah and give up what is still due to you from the interest, if you are true believers. If you do not do so, then take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. But if you repent, you can have your principal. Neither should you commit injustice, nor should you be subjected to it. The Prophet Muhammad said in a hadith, the soul of the believer is held hostage by his debt in his grave until it is paid off. But let's humor you fatwa shoppers for a sec for any haram you want made halal. Yeah, I call it for what it is. By going over the conditional permissions granted to use an interest-based credit card, only when no alternatives exist. Only when no alternatives exist. When no alternatives exist. Sorry, I was stuck on repeat but some keywords to remember there. So I dissected a prominent Mufti's fatwa that I'm not gonna name by the way, allowing you to sign, agree, and use an interest-based credit card under certain conditions. Guess what? Even when I'm following that same Mufti's opinion, who's not a sellout by the way, and a real credible authority on Islamic financial matters, the use of credit cards still came out to be completely haram. Those conditions that were the basis of approval are no longer valid. Scholars that gave you the conditional permission to sign up and use an interest-based credit card say that in an avoidable situation, again, in an avoidable situation, one should avoid obtaining an interest-based credit card. That means stay the hell away from them at all costs. It's haram to sign, agree, and use something that brings you closer to or directly engages you in riba. However, in unavoidable conditions, the loophole, <clears throat> sorry, some BS there, the conditional permission was granted by a lot of scholars to justify signing an interest-based contract to obtain and use an interest-based credit card, only when you have no other alternatives, and that not having a credit card becomes very challenging for practical day-to-day -day life and would cause a lot of difficulties to the average Muslim, especially when dealing with the conventional corporate world. 
overall leading you to unavoidable situations. Yeah, as Muslims with common sense, let's sincerely question ourselves here for a sec. Unavoidable situations like what? Pressed by what need exactly? What difficulties are there that life is so unsurvivable in 2021 without a bloody five to $10,000 Visa or MasterCard? That without your plastic interest-based credit card with an overinflated name like Platinum Travel, Ultimate High, Mega Cashback Visa or MasterCard, you as a person with a family cannot buy groceries, gas, book plane tickets or hotels and so on without it. How does your life pause and what difficulties do you really fall into? The answer is none, but more on that later. If there were any alternatives in your country to an interest-based credit card, that loophole, <coughs> sorry, same BS, the conditional permission would no longer be applicable. Boy, done. That means your interest-based credit cards are haram and have to be eliminated because there are non-interest Visa and MasterCard alternatives that you can use right now. And I'm not even talking about an Islamic credit card yet. But here's your first major one. Ready? The Visa debit or debit MasterCard that you get when you have a checking account from your bank. Issue solved. We've had this major alternative for a long, long time. Yet many of us have become so desensitized to interest-based credit cards that we have multiples, not just one for necessity's sake. Have a debit card in a conventional bank which does not attract any interest. But credit card in a conventional bank is haram. It's a major sin. It is equivalent to doing zina with your mother. That's what a prophet said. It is clearly mentioned in Mustadak al-Hakim. Hadith number 2259, that there are 73 levels of riba. The lowest level is doing zina with your mother. And it's clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse number 270 and 279, that if you give up not the demands of riba, take notice of a war from Allah and your soul. So I request all the Muslims in any part of the world, if you have a credit card from any of the conventional bank, please, today itself, if not today, tomorrow, please discontinue it. Open an Islamic bank. If you don't have an Islamic bank, convert it into a debit card. Debit card is permissible when there's no riba involved. Thus, your interest-based credit cards all have to go for the sake of Allah and your afterlife, especially being a good role model for your family and the young ones. The sole excuse that you pay it off before the interest kicks in does not apply because you can book flights, hotels, buy gas, groceries, and pay bills and accommodate all of your Amazon spending with the Visa debit or debit MasterCard that you already get as a standard from your bank with your checking account. Narrated by Abdullah ibn Hanzala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A dirham of riba which a man receives knowingly is worse than committing adultery 36 times. Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Riba has 70 segments, the least serious being equivalent to a man committing adultery with his own mother. So brothers and sisters, what difficulty? What unavoidable situations and what need do you exactly have to sign up and get a traditional interest-based credit card? except for borrowing money and engaging in interest payments. There's none. Oh, but what about an emergency fund? SubhanAllah, the haram should never ever be our backup. Whoa, wait, let's turn that into a hashtag everywhere, okay? Comment below, haram not my backup. Now, if you were using a credit card to develop your credit history, which a lot of people would say at this point, you can make a small cash down payment and purchase an entry level vehicle at 0% financing or lease a vehicle, which will easily get you all the established credit history you need and want. Yeah. Vehicle loan payments beats high interest unsecured credit card debt any day. Additionally, you can use an automatic credit history building features on prepaid visa apps like Coho now to automatically build your credit score for a small fee every single month, which you can find my links to in the description below. I don't think the majority of us realize just how haram and bad signing an interest-based credit card contract really is. Generally, an interest-based credit card contract states that if you're unable to pay the money you owe, you'd pay interest. This in itself is you committing to interest plain and simple and going against the Quran as stated by yours truly. It is totally haram. The moment you take a credit card from a conventional bank, you are signing a document saying that if you do not pay it in time, you will give riba. Signing a document that you will pay riba is also haram. What's worse is regardless if your intention is to pay off whatever you spend or never spend more than what you can pay back, so you avoid ever paying any interest, which is what we all tell ourselves when getting a credit card, is also you simultaneously making the intention by signing that contract that if and when you pay the money back, you will pay interest. Just listen to this talked aloud to what you agreed to when you signed an interest-based credit card contract. Dear God, I'll just sign a contract agreeing to pay interest, but I won't pay interest by paying off the complete balance of what I owe every single month, or I just won't spend the money I don't have. However, I will totally pay interest if there's a balance of money that I owe because my backup was haram. Great plan, eh? This is how we all end up in debts in the first place. In our society, credit cards are your gateway towards riba and interest, kind of like your gateway drug. Marijuana, 
the desensitization, normalization, and use of debt as a required utility for day to day life, when it's completely unnecessary and not required, is how the system ultimately sucks you in. Interest based car loans, lines of credits, and ultimately home loans are your next step up. People state with pride that a bank is willing to lend them an X amount of money because they're just so awesome. No, you're not! That's like loving your drug dealer or your bartender who has no problem giving you your fix for a short term until he comes to collect. This is how the system of debt screws your progression and holds you back in this world and especially the next. Wake up. Listen to this very concerning hadith. A person in debt will not enter paradise until the debt is paid off. Muhammad ibn Jash radiallahu anhu said, We were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he raised his head towards the sky, then he put his palm on his forehead and said, SubhanAllah, what a strict issue has been revealed to me. We remained silent and were afraid. The following morning I asked him, O Messenger of Allah, what is the strict issue that has been revealed? He said, By the one in whose hand my soul is, if a man were killed in the battle for the sake of Allah, then brought back to life, then killed and brought back to life again, then killed and he owed a debt, he would not enter paradise until his debt was paid off. May Allah protect us. Ameen. Unfortunately, majority of the Muslims are in debt. Guess how they got started? Credit cards. Guess what that means? They're all paying interest. Riba, did the loophole of the Mufti's fatwa you shop for make your life any easier? I'm gonna say it got harder for the most of you because the number one debt most people have is credit card debt. Especially when the financial institutions are tempting you, offering you 0% balance transfers for six months to a year or 0% financing for 12, 24 or 36 months on furniture and electronics. Just finance it, right? Ever miss a payment on those things? They'll hit you with so much high interest for every month you finance at 0%. And I don't even think those offers are halal because the admin fee they charge is a percentage on the amount you borrow, which is money being made on money lent. It's all predatory and it's all a trap that must be avoided. Traditionally in Islam, when we talk about debt, it's always about the virtues of you as the lender giving someone extended time to pay back the loan or forgiving the loan. However, when was the last time you heard a khutbah about how much taking on debt is discouraged in Islam? How unpaid debt holds you back in this life and the hereafter? Unnecessary loans are a cause of punishment and the wrath of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad said, whoever asks people for money when he has what is sufficient for him is only asking for more of the embers of hell. They asked him, O Messenger of Allah, Law. What is sufficient so that he does not have to ask for more? He said having enough to eat lunch and dinner. In a different hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Whoever asks the people for money when he has what is sufficient for him will come on the day of judgment with scratches and lacerations on his face. Let's address the problem and use the solution. If a Muslim has agreed to an interest contract and has made use of any interest-based financing, should immediately without delay seek repentance. Tawbah and ask for forgiveness, istighfar. The conditions of repentance are stopping and leaving the sinful act immediately, asking Allah for forgiveness, feeling guilty of the sin and sincerely intending to never return to that sin. Remember that Allah's mercy is greater than our sins. So rely on the mercy of Allah and pay off immediately what you owe. Then cancel and kill your cards ASAP. It is Allah's will to make things clear to you, guide you to the noble ways of those before you and to turn to you in mercy. For Allah is all knowing, all wise. And it is Allah's will to turn to you in grace. But those who follow their desires wish to see you deviate entirely from Allah. Allah's way. And it is Allah's will to lighten your burdens, for humankind was created weak. Great news though, faster than you can kill your interest credit cards, you can make use of non-interest alternative options right away. As mentioned, first one being the Visa Debit or Debit MasterCard you most likely already have from your bank. No work required there, just start using it. Second alternative is if you ever come across a vendor that accepts only Visa or MasterCard and not the debit versions, because that does happen, use the prepaid Coho Visa or stacked MasterCard apps with my referral links in the description below. You can also download the Mogo Visa app and monitor your credit score for free. Yeah, I'm a boss like that. <laughs> I use these regularly for my daily finances and I'll be making an in-depth video on how do I use what's already available in the market to manage my day-to-day -day money the halal way. That's it for this video. Smash the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell icon for upcoming videos. Say Alhamdulillah and Haram not my backup. Once you have killed your interest-based credit cards in the comments below, encourage other Muslims to do the same and spread the halal by sharing this video. May Allah reward you all. Until the next one, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.